Hi everybody, my name is Nathan Fawkes. I'm an animation artist, but at the same time, I believe that it's my study of life drawing, translating the three-dimensional world into two-dimensional drawings and paintings that has made my animation work possible. And so that's what I'd like to do with you today. I'd like to do a portrait drawing in charcoal using this model to do this drawing. So let me show you my recommended materials. Now certainly use the materials that you like and you want, but here's what I'll be using today. And I think the important thing for all of us at least is to get a full range of light and dark. And that's why I like to sometimes use white chalk in my drawings. And I also use very dense compressed charcoal to make sure I can get my darkest darks. So let's dive right into our drawing here. And I'm immediately grabbing a piece of compressed charcoal. So for the specific materials for this drawing, we're using a pit charcoal pencil, soft compressed charcoal, a kneaded eraser, and Reeves cream lightweight paper. Reeves is a paper that has a beautiful surface for taking charcoal. I think you'll enjoy it. And since we have a limited amount of time here, we'll specifically be talking about the rendering of light and shadow and using light and shadow to design our portrait composition. So the drawing has already been laid in. This might sound a little strange to you, but it works for me, an orange Prismacolor pencil. The reason I love the orange Prismacolor is the drawing stays there, no matter how aggressive I am with my drawing. And it doesn't get in the way. It stays present just enough for me to hold on to it. So with that in mind, what I've been doing here is hitting my key landmarks with dark strokes only in the shadow only landmarks in the shadow and finding the long lines of the clothing and then starting to mass in the shadows. And it really is that simple. What's in light, what's in shadow. And keep in mind this starting with the dark darks, there's no rule that it's proper to do your dark darks first. That just happens to suit the approach for this drawing because it has fairly heavy shadows and I need to not lose those shadows, especially where the forms are. Okay, so her hair, very dark, local value of hair, local value being how dark something actually is regardless of the light. So I'm dropping that in and the hair has a nice sheen to it. And I wanna hold on to that sheen so you can see I'm carefully working around and letting that light, that area of light that wraps around the head through the hair, I'm keeping that present and then filling in the rest of the areas of shadow. And once I have that done, even though there's a whole lot left to do, I feel like I've won half the battle because when the masses of light and shadow feel right and you feel like you start having a lightness appear, it gives you confidence to move forward with the drawing and not have to work and rework. So I'm now thinking a little bit about composition in the background. And there's a specific reason why I'm putting in those diagonal strokes leading from the top left-hand corner. See the cast of the shadows from the nose and from the chin and jawline? That's the direction of the light and I'm specifically following that direction in the background. That gives a cohesive quality to the composition, helps the whole thing feel like it's holding together. Also, you notice I already laid in that necklace. Well, that's a key part of the visual interest of the portrait composition. So I wanna get that right in so I can see how everything else balances against it. So with all these big masses confidently in place, I'm ready to start doing a little bit of rendering into the light with finger painting. I love finger painting. If you hate it, no worries. You don't have to do it. You don't have to do anything my way, but um, you need something that will give you the tones and the transitions that you need for your drawing. So try blending stumps, try 
tissue, a, a, a leather chamois is something some artists use to push tone around. But I've tried all of those and then some, and in the end, I have far and away the most control over my finger. And because I don't want to put the hard, dark, compressed charcoal right down into the light areas, it just leaves too much grit. I grab charcoal out of the shadows and then I just use my finger to drag it around into the light areas. And you'll notice that I'm specifically following the direction of the form. See how I'm following the direction of the hair with my strokes? That's very important. This is a two-dimensional flat piece of paper trying to recreate the three-dimensional world. We've got to do everything. We've got to lie, cheat, and still. We've got to pull out every stop that we can to give that quality of the three-dimensional world to this two-dimensional piece of paper. So you'll notice the cheek. I'm wrapping my strokes around in the cheek there when I was doing that earlier. You'll notice, look down in the neck. The neck is a cylinder. See how... When I was wrapping my strokes around the neck earlier, I followed the cylinder. There I am back again. And then I have a need for speed. We can't just noodle, noodle, noodle. That'll take forever. And I think it'll even make the portrait feel kind of overworked. A bunch of little tiny strokes that are all the same size everywhere. That gets kind of busy, boring, overworked. So you'll notice I went through the background and even down into the shirt and the cloth. And I just pushed my hands back and forth and gave a nice blend to that charcoal. It took me 20 seconds to do that. Okay, so now I'm ready to start digging in with some highlights. That's a kneaded eraser that I'm holding and toning with, or removing tone, I should say. So a kneaded eraser, if you haven't used one, is a soft piece of putty eraser. You can shape it any way you want. You can shape it into a point and get some nice little details. Just lift them right out of the charcoal. And you see I'm going back in now with my charcoal pencil after having lifted out some highlights. That's the pit charcoal pencil. The pit has a good, dark, dense charcoal. And it's the only pencil I've found that is dark enough to get deep darks within an already dark shadow. And I need that. I need that for those features to get them to lay inside the dark mass of shadows nicely. And you'll notice that I waited all the way till now to do the key features. For some of you, that might be counterintuitive. Now, once again, it's not the right way to draw. My way is not the right way to draw. There's all kinds of different approaches. And in other demonstrations I've done, I've tried out and shown many other approaches. But part of the point here is if I render, render, render the eyes, the nose, the mouth, before I get all the other big masses of elements working together, I might find, and I often do find, that they just don't fit together quite right. And that I've spent an hour rendering just to have to erase it out and throw it away. But if I'm confident in the big masses of light and shadow, if they just feel right, and they feel like I have a good lightness of my model, then it's much more likely that as I add in those details into those big accurate shapes, they'll just fall into place. They'll be much more likely to sit nicely within the light and the shadow. Okay, so just doing some pushing and pulling here, a little in the light, a little in the shadow, kind of softening some tones, uh, form shadows. Those are the shadows that wrap around the form and they curve into the light. I'm using my finger to softly get those things to turn. Where I need to go a little darker in the shadow, you can see I'm using my pit pencil. And then bits here and there where I need to pull some light back out, switching to my kneaded eraser. Now, anything goes. Whatever I need to do, lighten, darken, soften, wrap around. I'm using fingers, kneaded eraser, and pit charcoal pencil to make those moves. So in the hair, and this is the thing I, I love about hair, you can, you can really, hair can be so hard. And yet, thinking in terms of the big masses, you can really let that hair fall into place. 
you might notice I just dropped a little bit of that hair right up at the crown of the head at the very top. That adds a nice little bit of visual activity. It's really there, so it makes sense to put it in, but it was important to put it in. It even that circular shape kind of reflects that shape of the necklace down below. And I like that circular shape. There's kind of several circles starting to happen in this portrait, in the background, the overall shape of the head, the necklace, and I like that repetitive quality. Okay, so I'm using the kneaded eraser to push and pull the tones around a little bit in the hair there, just fine tune those. I don't wanna render individual strands of hair, not yet and not much, because there's lots of individual strands of hair, but what am I gonna do, render all 90,000 of them? So I'll find a few more later, but not till the end. I want to make sure everything important is working before I start getting caught up in individual pieces and parts. Now, I've been teaching for a long time now. I started teaching life drawing in 1999. That was a while back. And myself and my students, we have made every single mistake possible. And the most common, and everybody does it, and I mean everybody, it's getting caught up in the individual pieces and parts at the expense of the whole drawing. And if we let that happen, we end up with something like a sack of walnuts instead of a cohesive, purposeful drawing that really just a knockout punch that drives the likeness of the person home. So we just missed, because I was busy chit-chatting, using that white chalk that I had mentioned earlier in the materials. And that is only for the very brightest highlights. If you push that around too much and let it spread out and start hitting the charcoal, if it blends with the charcoal, it'll turn into a mess. So just that much. And just pulling out, there's some light hitting that uh, foreground eye, just giving it a little bit of form, a little bit of definition. There's a... Uh, reflected light in the far eye. I pulled that out with the kneaded eraser a little bit earlier, and that's very important. Eyes need that sheen of wetness. It's how you help your subject feel alive. And so with that, as we put in our final strokes here, we're bringing that bad boy, or I guess I should say I'm used to saying bad boy as an expression, that bad girl to a finish. And so Let's pin down the final touches here. And it's just going to be pushing and pulling, checking my drawing against my subject, making sure the forms are reading, that they have volume, keeping things simple, resisting the temptation to start noodling little teeny details out of the bigger masses where they might start creating those bumps and pox and, uh, make her look like she's somebody that she's not. I'm also thinking a lot about edges. That's an important part of the portrait composition because I have my big giant masses of light and dark in the background. I have my directions, my directional strokes for the composition, but those edges, I don't want a hard edge all the way around the head. That'll feel kind of cut out, draw too much attention. And so you see those soft edges drifting into the background around the head, especially on the hair. But I do want a good silhouette uh, on the right hand side. I want that shadow to feel good and dark and to bring some attention to the eyes. And so we have the eyes, we have dark hair surrounding them, and then we have that bright background light just off to the right of the portrait. Finishing touches in the eyes, kneaded eraser, a few little uh, crisp edges where the cast shadows are. And keep in mind, cast shadows, make sure you've got this. Cast shadows have crisp edges, as you can see here in our finish. And form shadows have soft curving edges. It holds on to that solid quality of direct light. But there it is, there's our drawing. And we've sped it up quite a bit for you here to keep to the essentials, not bore you silly with the details. This was something like uh, less than one hour of a drawing. And it's that simple statement and that light and shadow and that composition 
that can really give your portrait authority. So I hope that was helpful for you. And if you'd like to see more of what I do, you can take a look at NathanFaux.com.